Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're doing good. I'm Jesse with Green Chick Gardens. Today, we are going to do a little bit of plant chores, repotting, and also I'll show you around, check out some of the new leaves we've got coming up on some stuff. Um, also, later, I've got a new package in the mail, and I'm going to do a little bit of a plant experiment here at the end with some Spiritus Sancti. Let's go. So the first thing we're going to do today is transition some more plants over to LECA. They are in soil right now. We've been doing this in the past videos, so I'm sure most of you have already seen some of those. However, most of those plants that we've been moving over have been less rare in the range of what we want to call rare. Today I'm going to transplant a couple of my more rare and precious plants. And so these are ones that I've been a little bit more nervous to transition, just didn't want to stress them out. Um, but we are going to go ahead and get a couple going today. So the first one I'm going to do is a Monstera Mint. These are some of my favorite plants and uh, I've got probably six or seven Monstera Mints. This one has basically not grown since I have propagated it. It's just been basically stalled out and I wanna get a look at the roots and maybe you know a fresh new start in some LECA will hopefully get this thing up and going and getting on its way, putting out some new leaves for us. So we're going to get this thing um, out of its pot and see what the roots look like. Okay, so just a two-leaf Monstera Mint. Um, this leaf is beautiful. This leaf looks pretty good, but it's got a little browning on it. And uh, let's just see what these roots look like. I'm pretty curious. I don't know if it's been rotting much. See, this is what I was afraid of. We don't have too many roots here. We do have some new root growth. I can see some new white tips growing right there, right there. So we do have a bit of growth. Um, and so that is good. However, for as long as this uh, Monstera has been in that pot, we should be doing much better than that. And so uh, it's probably not a bad idea. I don't know. This is very, uh, very moist mix. And it possibly was getting too much moisture. Might have not been getting enough oxygen in there. So we're going to move this over and see if we can help it out. There are plenty of roots growing in there. Uh, just now starting to grow, it looks like. And uh, so it would have been doing okay. But, uh. I think we can get this thing to grow a bit quicker. So I'm going to go wash this off. So I've washed the roots off pretty well. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get our pot out so that we can pot this thing up. I'm just going to go ahead and put the wick in our pot. And uh, I think this one's going to be okay, especially since it's just now starting to throw out some new roots. I think they'll easily convert into uh, this new substrate we're putting it into and um, turn into water roots fairly quickly. And shouldn't skip too much of a beat as it transitions over to LECA. Let's at least hope that is the case, as this is a rather expensive plant. And I would like to do my best to try and keep it alive. So, like I said, there are a fair amount of new root growth going on right in here. And a couple on the other side. And uh, we're going to hope that that will convert easily over to... Be lucky. I'm just going to tuck it in there. Hopefully this will give enough support so I don't have to stake this plant. About lost it. So... That's all there is to it. We're getting pretty quick at this. And that is going to be our new pot for our Monstera Mint. This is the first mint we've put into LECA. With the plants we did yesterday, I'm actually fairly confident in um, what we're doing now, uh, learning on the go. And uh, those made me pretty confident in what we're doing. We got new root growth out of quite a few of the plants and they were seeming to be thriving pretty well in the LECA. And we will put fertilizer in those before too long, and hopefully that will make them take off even quicker. But today is going to be a rare houseplant repotting. We'll probably only do this one plus maybe one or two more. We'll see how I feel as we go. But here's to our Monstera, 
doing well in its new home. And hopefully putting it in this new Lucka will um, make it grow a little quicker. Maybe give it a new reboot that it needs to uh, get going. It has been sitting dormant looking just like this for a very long time. No uh, swelling has happened in our node on the stem here. And uh, let's see. One interesting thing that I did yesterday that I didn't get on camera, I was out here looking at my stuff and I noticed my philodendron Orlandos and the soil looked, you know, pretty compact and hard. And uh, so I took it out just to examine the roots and the roots were not looking great at all. They were very dried up as if they weren't getting oxygen. And so I took them out of that. I found a pack of fluval stratum that I've had. I did experiments with a while ago but this is stratum fluval stratum and it is a almost like pelletized is that the word pelletized soil balls and uh you can pretty much just take it and uh it turns into dirt when you do that but it works very well for propagation stuff like that it's just very expensive so i don't use it too often I completely forgot I even had that bag. So I took my philodendron Orlando out of that soil and uh, put some fluval stratum in a cup. And I now have this sitting in here. And I'll continuously try and keep this wet. Not overly wet, but this also does kind of what uh, Leca does as it has capillary action that will bring the moisture right back up closer to the plant as it needs it. So I wanted to just put this on camera so that I could remember it and uh, examine it and see how this does as it continues on. It has two absolutely stunning leaves right there. I love both of these super white leaves. And I hope we can get this thing to get growing a bit better. It was doing fine, uh, but I think we could find it a much better home in this. And also another experiment. I wanna just do a little bit, see how this stratum works for where some of our plants I also took a silver pastazonum cutting yesterday, and this is the cutting. So there's really no roots on this, and I'm just going to stick it into this moist fluval and see how it will do as well. As long as we keep this moist, I think we should get roots pretty easily and rather quickly. This was a healthy plant, and I think this will turn into a beautiful, strong silver pastas on them rather quickly so these are the two things i put in fluval so i just wanted to get this on camera so that we could see these and uh see this experiment as it goes on and see if it's successful or not uh, also it'll help you guys hopefully um just another way to propagate maybe if you have something that uh, is in intensive care or needs a lot of help or is a very precious plant to you fluval might be the way to go it's just another option out there and you might find a lot of success with it compared to other things but we're going to keep these going, and I will show you these as the weeks and months go on, whether it's good or not. One more thing I'd like to mention about the Fluval Stratum. Uh, one of my Thai constellations came in just a small cup with a Fluval Stratum as the substrate. And it was a very tiny, probably just newly acclimated Thai constellation. It is the only Thai constellation as a small acclimated tissue culture that I actually grew from tissue culture up into, you know, the plant that it is today. Um, so I don't know if there's something to fluval stratum being a little bit of a better substrate for Thai constellation, but the Thai constellation that was in the fluval stratum did not root rot as the others all did. I tried sphagnum moss, I tried an aeroid mix, I tried just perlite, and the only one that didn't root rot was the one in the fluval stratum. So that's just uh, something to think about. And uh, I just thought about it, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. All right, let's go get another rare plant. Okay, so next up, we are going to do a Burley Marks Flame Monstera. I love this one as it matures. Those flame-shaped leaves are absolutely beautiful. Mine, however, I have two, are very small. This is the one we are going to repot today. You can see that this leaf does have a bit of fenestration to it if that's what you want to call it but not much going on there the other one almost just as small it does have a new leaf just about to emerge but i've had these for quite a while and they've been very slow growers for me i've not been too thrilled with how far they've came along i think that they could be growing better and quicker so i'm going to put one into leka just to see if that will change anything 
we'll still have our what I would call our better one in soil for now um, and just leave it alone maybe use it as a baseline for our other one in LECA. I have watched Kebla Plantas Bromarks Flame in LECA and it has done amazing. It has grown so quickly and it looks beautiful. And so I wanna try the LECA and see if maybe I can get you know close to the same results as he does. I don't think I'm as good of a grower as him, so I'm not planning on it being the same, but I could definitely tell you that we barely have any roots on this and so I think a change was definitely in order for this one. We'll see if we can maybe jumpstart this one as well. So I just took off the soil, came off rather easily because there's not many roots growing here. I mean, I've had this thing for probably, I would say five to six months. That is just not, that's not good for five or six months worth of growth. I mean, we saw, I put plants in our LECA and in less than two weeks, we you know, basically have had this much growth. Uh, so maybe, maybe Leco is the answer here and we will see. I'm going to go wash these roots off real quick. Okay. So washed off relatively clean. There's still some soil on there, I'm sure, but I don't want to damage these roots too much seeing as there's not much to work with here anyways. So we're going to just leave it as is. There is virtually not even any new growth going on in these roots. It's pretty much stalled out. And so hopefully this Aleka that we're going to put it in will change that. I am not thrilled with what we have gotten out of our Burly Mox Flame so far. So once again, we'll take a wick and put it in our pot. I think this will be a plant where we will really see the results of moving over to Aleka. To be honest with you, I couldn't even tell you what is necessarily going wrong with this plant and why we're not getting very much growth. I feel like I have taken care of this one rather well it is a plant that is pretty important to me i want to see the beautiful leaf that it comes out with so i examine these quite often i wouldn't say it's been overwatered. it's been in a very very arid mix i wouldn't think it's been underwatered even though that would be my tendency would be to underwater something but uh, i've kept a pretty good eye on it so i'm just not sure what would be the problem but hopefully this will fix that for us um, if anything it can't be much worse i would have expected much more roots i'm i'm actually very disappointed in that so we will put it in this leka and we will cross our fingers that this does something a little better but time will tell so wish us luck and we'll get to the next plant. All right, so I've got one more plant that I'm going to repot today, and this one we're also gonna take a cutting off of. I'm a little nervous to do this, but this plant probably needs it. It's looking a little ratty, and um, we're gonna just see if we can get one more plant off of it. But for this one, it is going to be my largest Monstera Mint. It's got two new leaves that have sprouted off of the back of its node here. This is the oldest leaf that it came with. And this one's looking crusty, so I'll probably take it off. There is a, there is one, possibly two nodes that haven't activated on this. So we're going to take it out of the pot. First, I'm going to cut this off just to get it out of there so I can see a little better in here and probably show you guys a little better. And we're going to take it out of this pot, see what the roots look like. And see what we could do if there's a cutting that we could take so that we could potentially get one more mint monster out of this i don't know what it's going to be like so the first thing we're going to do is take this leaf off i'm just going to cut it off with my pruners goodbye sweetheart you did good for us and we will miss you i mean it wasn't in the worst shape you could definitely tell that the energy was starting to be taken from here and transferred into our newer leaves. But now that that is gone, we're going to take this out of the pot and see what the roots look like on this thing. It's going to be a pretty healthy root system. I see quite a few roots here. Oh yeah, look at all these roots. Now, the only problem I've already seen is they're all coming off of this one 
root. We only have one root on this thing. We don't like to have one root um, coming off of our main stem, just in case this were to rot, say right in here, then that would essentially take out this whole root structure and we would basically be starting from scratch with a wet stick and we just don't want that. That'll put us way behind. There's not much we can do about it besides put our stem a little bit closer to the soil and, and hopefully that will uh, encourage a little bit more root to grow down into the soil from the moisture. <clears throat> but I'm just going to call that good for now as I want to show you some other stuff here. So now that we've seen this, here's one more of the problems. So here's where our newest bud activated from, right at this node. There is another node right here. If you can see that node. And uh, I would like to cut this and use that node. The problem is if I was to cut this about right in here so that this node would activate, we would essentially be left with this plant with no roots whatsoever. And that seems a bit risky to me, seeing as uh, we would have to develop a whole new root structure for our new plant. This one I wouldn't be too worried about, just because we have all of these roots, and this would probably easily start to grow with enough energy coming, with enough energy provided from the roots. Oh, we do have one more node right back here. So we have two more nodes on this plant. Let's see if I can show you that. There's one node. And there is the other node. So that's two nodes. I just don't know if I want to do that. So I've been contemplating on whether I want to take a cutting off of this plant or not. And you may be thinking that's a dumb idea. It's a pretty young plant. So I'll try and show you what's going on in my head here. So we have this, so we have this node right here. And we also have a node on the back here. So we have two nodes right here and right here. This is what we're going to be cutting off somewhere about right in here. So that we will leave both of our nodes. And hopefully both will sprout. And uh, we'll get two, two plants, two leaves out of it at least. But I think I'm going to just go ahead and do it and get it over with. We're going to cut this right here. that's all there is to it so i'm gonna let this dry out for about a day just to help stop root rot just in case it was to start up so i'm just gonna leave this place somewhere where it can dry out for a day and this will stay above the soil so i'm not really too worried about it rotting part of me can't believe i just did that we'll see what happens so now we have a cutting of a monster mint with two potential growth points, two nodes on it. At this point, we'll get to see how quickly the buds start to pop and see where, see where, see where it goes. Lord help us. So I'm gonna go wash these roots out and then we'll put this thing in some LECA. So since the root structure is so long on this cutting, we are going to use a little bit of a larger pot this time. So I'll just take my root mass, probably put just a bit in the bottom there and kind of twirl it around so that it will rest in there. I want to keep my stem above the soil line, the LECA line. This isn't soil. And we will see what happens. Turned out to be a pretty exciting day. When I woke up this morning, I was not planning on propagating a mint monstera. That's something I normally gotta work myself up for. Mint monstera prices are still pretty high. They've came down a bit in the last year, but they're still quite expensive. At least in my opinion, they're quite expensive. A one or two leaf cutting can still go for six, $700 on eBay. I've seen some people auctioning them for that price. This is my ideal mint monstera leaf. I just think that is amazing. Love that green, the dark green that you're getting with the contrast of this mint, minty white. And then this is what I've 
honestly got a good bit of is these just white leaves and i'm not 100 percent sure if this is just full variegation which we don't want because we're getting no energy from these leaves or if it will slowly start to turn more green there is green in there you can see some of it in that vein but uh, there's not a lot and so I'm a bit fearful that these just, you know, aren't growing that well, just because they won't ever get enough energy to really get going. So that's why I'm not too scared to cut this off. We still have our base plant here. If this was to die, would we be held back a bit? Yes, but we still have two nodes going in our base plant here with a great root system. And so we will have that one either way. This is more of our bonus plant or our extra plant we got from our base plant. I'm hoping to keep this alive, obviously, and I want to see roots come out of our new cutting here. And we will see them, and I'll let this dry, like I said, for a day, and I'll come back to it and um, address it then. I don't know if I'll be just wrapping it in sphagnum, which I probably will, or uh, if I want to just try and experiment any other way with it. Some people might find it pretty dumb that I'm experimenting with plants that are so expensive. Um... Most of the time, I'm not too worried about whether or not they'll survive. It's more of if they will thrive or not. But this is our mint monstera now. And uh, we're going to go sit it over there and uh, cross our fingers that we get some good variegation on this one. I will admit, when I started this video, I did not expect that to happen, but it did. Okay, so now we're going to go on to um, a little bit more of a fun part, at least for me. So I've got some stuff that I'm going to try out. I have got six Spiritus Sancti here, and they are all virtually the same size. These were Tissue Culture Spiritus Sancti. They have grown really well and very quickly, and they are what I would call relatively healthy plants. So I have six, and they're all the same, you know, close to the same size, and um, just what I thought would be a easier way of experimenting with them. They all look relatively the same for now. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to put two in LECA. We're going to put two in the fluval stratum from earlier. And we're going to put two in a substrate that has been mentioned in my comments. And that is Lechuza Pond. And uh, we're going to see which one does better we're going to use two just to see if we can get a little bit of a better scope of things like i said leca fluval stratum and lechuza pond and we're going to see which one grows better i will try and keep them in close to the same conditions as the experiment goes on obviously won't be able to keep them perfectly the exact same conditions um, and there will be plenty of other variables this is just to see if we can see a visible difference between the spirit of sancti as they are growing okay so the first thing to do here is just take these all out of the soil as i'm doing this i would like to mention i have four more spirit of sancti that are going to remain in soil and they will basically be my control now the other four are a tad bit larger so they kind of got a head start on what i'd say these will but uh it'll be virtually the same we'll just keep that in mind as we're going so what we have here is our six spirit of sancti i've washed all the roots as good as i'm going to and they all look pretty comparable i'm not too mad about that so i think that'll be an even starting point for them all to start from all right so i've washed the roots i have also washed the pots i'm going to repot them back into the same pots that they were already in um, these are going to be the same size as the ones that are still in the soil so i thought that would uh, help eliminate one more variable we have is pot size so they'll all be in the same pots. We won't have to worry about that. So the first two I'm going to do are going to be the two that will be going into LECA. All right, so I got a bit of a base layer. I will put my plant into the pot and add the rest of the LECA. All right, so we've got one in LECA. We've got two in LECA, and now I'll do the fluval stratum. So I've taken our fluval stratum and put a base layer in both of these. So now I'm just going to put these 
into the pot and fill up the sides. Okay, there's one and here's going to be the other one. Okay, so now we have our two fluval stratum. And last but not least, we're gonna try the Lechuza Pond. And I'll fill a small base layer in the Lechuza Pond. One thing I would like to mention with the pond, we are going to have, if you can see the smaller bluish greenish pebbles in there, it does come with fertilizer in it. And that could play a part, but also that is just part of the soil that comes as Lechuza Pond. So we are going to keep that constant. And our last one. So these are our plants. I have two in Fluval Stratum, two in Lechuza Pond, two in Lecca, and I will keep these two in the original Aeroid mix that I had them growing in originally. And we will see what happens in a couple months. So I think it'll be pretty exciting to see where the Spirit of Sancti go in the next couple months as they grow in their different substrates. And if we see any visible type of difference, um, I will definitely let you know. I'll keep this updated every couple weeks, maybe every month or so. And uh, hopefully we'll put this to a playlist. Hopefully you can go through it and see it as the time kind of passes by. If anybody has any thoughts or ideas or guesses as to what will be better, uh, leave them in the comments below. We will see what happens. I'm going to try and keep everything as consistent as possible with these. That will be basically impossible to do, but I will try and keep the humidity levels, the moisture levels, and all of that as close as I can. Um, this isn't a scientific experiment. This is more just a for fun type of experiment. But like I said, drop a comment on which one you think will do the best, and we will see in the next couple months um, who's right. All right, guys, so that's all I've got for you today. I hope you liked that experiment we did there at the end, and in the next couple months, we'll see what happens. I'm pretty interested to see. Um, I won't tell you what my bet is on, but I do have it up here in my brain, and um, I hope I get to see all y'all's comments on what you think will be the best substrate on there as well. Other than that, we replanted quite a few um, rare and expensive houseplants today, and hopefully those will do just fine. I have confidence that they will, but it was a bit nerve-wracking to uh, cut that Monstera Mint. Remember to like and subscribe. We're almost to 500 subscribers. And with that, I'm Jesse, this is Charlie, and we'll see you next time at Green Chick Gardens.